<clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Kakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. They taught us his truth and to do it well. Much peace, love, blessings, and many salutations to your brothers out there laboring in this word, in all truth and in all sincerity, giving your bodies as a li living sacrifice unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh which is our reasonable service. And to you sincere believers out there in general, all right, both men, women, and children, unto you we say Shalom as well. All right, brothers out of Great Millstone Dallas, I'm the brother Shapal. Luck. All right, we're back to, back again with a um, you know another lesson just in the spirit. Um, you know, brothers coming together to kind of go over the. Uh, the importance of faith, man, all right, and what the scripture lays out and how it has certain accounts within it, dealing with, um, you know, particularly what we're going to go into to start the lesson, uh, get a few precepts after that, um, is the book of Samuel, all right, dealing with Samuel and how he was pretty much set up to be a judge over the nation of Israel after the fall of, um, you know, that wicked king Eli and um, his sons, and, and pretty much from that point forward, forward, all right, it leads up into what, the, 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 the uh, time of Saul and the time of David, all right, so on and so forth, right? Um, so with that being said, you got any opening points? Uh, no, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll just jump straight into it then, man, And because I was, we were actually, you know, a few brothers reading this during this week, um, it's kind of like a reading assignment, um, and then when you read, you know, this is something that caught my attention, I know the brother wanted to make a point on something that caught his, uh, his eye as well, all right? But when you read in 1 Samuel, all right, the seventh chapter specifically, okay, it pretty much goes into how in the earlier chapters, right, the, the, the Philistines, right, which are Hamites, uh, so-called Africans today, all right, they pretty much took the Ark of the Covenant, which when you understand what the Ark of the Covenant represents, it pretty much represents uh, us being in good standing with the Heavenly Father, right? It's, it's the dwelling place. Of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So when you see in the scriptures that we didn't have that Ark of the Covenant in our possession, the nation of Israel, right, and the heathen took it or whatever the case may be, because they knew pretty much that when they took that from us, well, we were powerless, right? Because our strength comes from heaven. The heavenly, the heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, is our shield and our buckler, man. He's our defense, right? So the Ark of the Covenant pretty much represented that dwelling place of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai being in the midst of the nation of Israel, right? But the Philistines, pretty much, they had a possession of it, wherein they were they were pretty much taken taken down. All right, the nation they slew like thousands and thousands of men. You know, pretty much they were winning right, at that point in time. But it came to pass when you read, like I said in the earlier chapters before the seventh chapter. All right, that the the Philistines they pretty much had, like I said, the possession of the Ark of the Covenant, and where they were trying to set it in particular lands, the Lord was smiting those regions. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's not for them to have, right? So the Lord pretty much had them to the point where they were like, okay, we're just going to give it back. So when you read in 1 Samuel 6 and 21, all right, it goes into it. It says, and they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kajath Jerim, right, which is a uh, pretty much a, a, I believe that translates to the city of forests, all right, when you look in the, uh, the blue letter. But pretty much it's a region in Judah, in the, in, the, in the region of Judah. All right, it says, saying, the Philistines have brought again the ark of the Lord. Come ye down and fetch it up to you. Right, so the Philistines ended up returning <laughs> the ark of the covenant, man, unto us because it was, like I said, the Lord was smiting them and, ta and taking them out because, you know, pretty much killing them because they had the possession that didn't belong unto them. Right, even though they were at that same time simultaneously overcoming us, you know, the Lord was pretty much, you know, he was taking them out as well, all right? But when you read verse 7, or chapter 7, verse 1, it says, And the man of Kajath Jerim came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eleazar his son to keep the ark of the covenant. So now it was back in our possession, right? Which remember, keep in mind that this is, is the dwelling place. It pretty much represents... You know, it had the mercy seat. It had all the things that we needed to, to for the for the Day of Atonement to keep that first covenant, okay? We needed to have the Ark of the Covenant, you see? But when you jump down, I'm going to start at verse uh, chapter 7. And, um, yeah, yeah, verse 8, all right? It says, And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us. 
that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines, right? Because even then, like it's going to go into, the Philistines were still, they were like, fuck it, man. We're going to still come up against these, <laughs> yeah. you know, this nation. All right, it says, and Samuel took a sucking lamb, which was a, pretty much a young lamb, and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him, you see? And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, <laughs> the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel, right? So they didn't learn. But it says, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomforted them. And they that were smitten before Israel. Oh, so like it says, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpeh and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came unto beth -car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpeh and Shen and called it the name of Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us, right? Which is, that's what it translates to. It says, so the, and this is the point that I wanted in verse 13, all right? It says, so the Philistines were subdued, and they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. So it goes to show when we're in good standing with Yahweh Shemiah Shai, which now we have the understanding in this period of grace, that it's by faith that we're justified. It's by, it's by believing it's by understanding that, he, that, that he's our salvation. That they're, they're not, uh, you know, our, my sword and my bow will not deliver me. But no, we're going to trust in Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Now it's through having that mindset, all right, in these latter days, right, in this period of grace. So again, I'm going to read it again. 1 Samuel 7 and 13. So the Philistines were subdued. Our enemies were subdued. And they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. So you can pretty much imagine that the Lord pretty much with us having being in good standing again with the Heavenly Father right remember this is in the period of the first covenant the Lord pretty much set his hand against him like yo you, like, like it's like a blockade you know yeah. what I'm saying you can no more <laughs> touch these people why because they're in good standings with me now right. and like I made the point hey now it's through faith in this right. period of grace now it's through believing in Yahweh Shai Mashiach now that does come with works all right, like it says in James, the second chapter, faith without works is dead. Tell me you have faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Actions are going to speak louder than words, as they say in the world. Exactly. Okay? But <laughs> that's pretty much what we're going into, the importance of faith, bro. Right. And, and the Lord, he, he puts these difficult situations and these, you know, the, the, uh, the circumstances in in front of you in front of our lives and in front of you know the, the in the stories to to really exalt himself yeah. and that's what that was you know they, it wasn't because that israel had the biggest strongest army that right. they really yeah. recovered the ark you know what i'm saying it's because you know the lord wanted to show and magnify himself so he has these things occur that we can't necessarily see in hindsight the, the way out of certain things happening but the lord is ultimately he's he's behind the scenes building up the story to create a, a um a miracle okay and that's and that's the difference between the the house of saul and the house of david mm -hmm. is they ultimately the house of saul they didn't believe right. you know the house of david they you know were were looking toward to the lord and making sure that you know keeping that order with the lord you know, and then the the rest of uh, you know David and every and everybody else, and ultimately you know keeping things in, in, in direct order and having that faith as well. Right, right, because like the scripture says, obedience is better right. than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So you could be keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to a T, but pretty much that that obedience goes back to what to faith. Because yeah. you, you like it says mm -hmm. uh, Hebrews eleven and six real quick, come, bro, come. and then I got a precept as well. Okay, this is a uh, Hebrews chapter eleven and verse six, but without faith. It is impossible to please him. Impossible, bro. It's not. It's not. It's not a possibility. Exactly. <laughs> it's not. It's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. The Lord isn't gonna deal with you if you don't have faith in Him, man. If you don't believe, like it says, mm -hmm. for he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is. He is Yahweh. That's what Yahweh means, man. Right. He is. He exists. Right. He is to be. He. He. The. 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 The, the Almighty. The Omnipotent. Right, you got it. Bro. And some niggas, some niggas don't even get that far. They don't even go. They say, "For he that cometh, bro, they don't even step foot to look to the Lord when stuff starts happening." Right. right. That's a that's that's a, a step in faith too. But not only you got to come to the Lord, you got to come to Him with belief, man. Yeah. That's 
that's the difference between the house of Saul and the elect, man. Straight up. You got to believe and you got to look to the Lord because like later in, I think that's the, um, later in first Samuel, I think when, when, you know, um, Saul didn't want to wait to, um, for the offering before battle with the Philistines mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Saul, I mean, uh, and Samuel was a little, he was tearing a little bit. The Lord was really testing Saul's patience, man. Obedience. And his obedience. Yeah. He didn't want to wait. He didn't have that confidence. So he was like, man, fuck it. Let me just do the sacrifice. You can't, Hey, <laughs> you gotta, he, he didn't even inquire from the Lord, man. <laughs> he just went ahead and did the sacrifice. So, you know, that's, that's the, you know, that order that I'm talking about. You got to come to the Lord first and then you got to, you know, really believe like, you know, let me, if, if he really, if Samuel, I mean, if, if Saul really believed me, he would have just held out and prayed, you know, and then Samuel would have just popped up and they would have did the sacrifice and the Lord probably would have, he probably wouldn't even lost no men in the battle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, straight up, bro. Even you read about it with the, in, what is it, Second Kings 6 with Elisha. Mm -hmm. uh, he prayed for his servant that he may open his eyes, that the Lord would open his eyes. Because he said, what, there'd be many more of us than there are of them. Right. See, you got to understand the angels of Psalms 34 and 7. The <laughs> yeah. angels encamped yeah, around about those that fear the Lord. Exactly. They trust in him. They love him. Right. The eyes of the Lord are upon them. They love them. And he, he's going to deliver them out of the situations. Mm -hmm. In the days we're coming into, in the latter days of the latter days, how much more so? Exactly. But that, that starts with faith, bro. Great Crazy point. faith. See, dudes talking about there's no such, there's not uh, going to be uh, those miracles, spiritual powers, you know, that these things aren't, that's a, that's a doubtful mindset, man. Right. That's not a, uh, that's not crazy faith. That's not next level faith. Peter in, in Matthew, the 14th chapter, walking on waters. That's right. next level faith, bro. You in the middle of the ocean and you going to go step off the ship? <laughs> During the storm. During the storm, right. The wind, it said the wind was blowing harshly, loosely paraphrasing. Right. But I got a preset, bro. This is our first Maccabees 3 and 17 because the same thing was pretty much taking place. And time and time again, you see in the in these different accounts that it, uh, pretty much the Lord has a majority who are like, well, well what, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, they're scattered. They're, they're not they're not honed in on just hey, being calm and being still and trusting in Yahweh. They're not grounded. They're not rooted and you know built up in him. They're not, yeah. They don't have that foundation in Yahweh's side of that faith. But yeah, go to one. No, no, you good, brother. Uh, first, uh, first Maccabees three. So the same thing was taking place during the time of uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, mm -hmm. right? The, the when 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 pretty much like it says that wicked root right. that came up and evils were multiplied into the earth, mm -hmm. right? That was the beginning of of well going back to the Grecians, but this was later on. But that was the pretty much the beginning of Esau's uh, rule, man, right. in the earth. You see, so that we had a pact. You could read about that in um. Uh, uh, what's it called, bro? The uh, the, 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 the Josephus, oh, right? God, you can read God. in the Josephus about that high priest at the time, I forget his name, but how he pretty much made a covenant with the heathen. When the scripture tells us not to do that, and that's eventually why later on we were taken down and smoked, which was what we're going to go into right here. But the Lord had it to where these battles were taking place, and we were winning some, we were losing some, we were, you know, but. The Lord has a story written, and this is this is this aligns with secular history at the end of the day, man. Exactly. Okay, but this is First Maccabees three, and I'm gonna start um, at verse sixteen. All right, and it says, and when he came near to the going up of Beth Haran, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company, who, when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Judas, How shall we be able, being so few? to fight against so great a multitude and so strong seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day so they were fasting all day mm -hmm. they're like how are we gonna win this according to the flesh that's that's a fleshly thought though like how are we gonna win this but you brought it out earlier when we were, when we were preparing this lesson matthew 6 take no mm -hmm. thought right therefore what you shall eat what should, what shall you be you be clothed right. take no thought man because the most high is gonna look out for his bro right but he that cometh to, unto the most high gotta believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Exactly. You see? That's why this period of grace is so important not to take take for granted, man. The Lord is having mercy upon us every day, bro. Uh, every day in ways we can't even comprehend, bro. Right. All right? And if I may say, lean not on your own understanding. You don't have to see a way out to know that there's a way out. Right. You know? Right. You don't have to see. You don't have, just because you can't see, we walk by faith. Right, not by not sight. Not by sight. That's right. Bro. You don't have to be able to see it. You can't <laughs> comprehend it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't. It's not for you to understand. Just trust in the Lord, man. Even if even if you happen to die, 
You know what I'm saying? At least you went out having faith, right? right? Isn't that a better way to go out? Like a having man. faith, like a man. Yeah, yeah, like we have, we have. This is what these accounts are for, man. To look, look at the generations of old and know how to walk and how not to walk, because we have examples of our forefathers who obeyed and disobeyed, and and uh, you know, there's there's a shame, a, a certain amount of shame in our culture, uh, you know, where if you if you weren't <laughs> you know kept your loyalty man you weren't you, you weren't uh your your seed literally wasn't able to to uh, prosper man they had to they had to die, they had to kill them as well you know what i'm saying you you weren't afforded that legacy man you want to be you want to uh to have a, a good record with the with the most high man even if you perish so right right um i was gonna make a point but uh Oh yeah, because the followers at that time, the apostles, during when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, pretty much all of them suffered terrible deaths, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, Yahweh Shai said, "Whosoever uh, you got to pretty much take up your cross and follow Him." Right. And when Yahweh Shai was taking up His cross, where was He going to? To die, man. Exactly. To be a, a sacrificial lamb unto the nation of Israel. So those, and, and what came from that though? He, he got total power and dominion now, and it's going to go to show forth when He makes His return. But you're going to have those 144,000 that are going to do this. Walk the same walk, pretty much, man. You know what I mean? But I'm going to finish this up. First Maccabees 3. So they was pretty much saying right here, like, How, what, it's a, we're a small company. We're outnumbered. What, oh, what are we going to do? Panicking and shit. Hey, and the, the priest of art likes to go into it, man, dealing with that uh, that Greek god Pan, man. Mm -hmm. That's where panic goes into, man. You, that's a, That goes into pretty much worshiping another deity, man. Yeah. Like the scripture says, uh, in first, was it First Timothy, two, or uh, Second Timothy two, maybe, or one? The Most High had not given us the spirit of fear, man, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Right. You see what I mean? When you focus on the outer circumstances, like these individuals right here, and you're not trusting in the Lord, man, that's that's faithless behavior. Right. Or putting your trust in the weapon or something like that. But I'm gonna finish it up. You know, First Maccabees three and eighteen, and nineteen is the point. It says, "Unto whom Judas answered." It is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with the God of heaven, it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of an host, but strength cometh from heaven, man. That's where our power lies in having faith in, in, the, in the things that, that Yahweh Basim Yahshai promised unto his men. That, that, that uh, you shall take flight. When the, 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 the standard's gonna be lifted, man. Faith, bro. What, what these dudes are saying is is faithless, man. Right. But the scripture does say, what? Be not, be not, uh, let not the incredulity, which means faithlessness, pretty much. Let not the incredulity of them trouble you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because all the faithless shall die in their unfaithfulness, right? right? But that, um, you would, did you want to make that point? Because I know you was. In First Samuel ten, you wanted to make a point going into uh, uh, when Samuel was telling Saul, but he had he didn't have the faith, kind of, right? He yeah. didn't have the faith. Basically, yeah, we you know, like the brother said, we was reading First Samuel and just meditating on it, and this is a point that stuck out to me in the book as well. Uh, this is um, First Samuel chapter ten, verse six, and this is I'm just giving you the pretext. So this is right when um, you know Saul is looking for his father's, I, I think it was his lamb. Um, or, you know, it might have been his, you know, I think it was his lamb. But anyway, it was a lost lamb. And he, he goes looking for it on a journey. Uh, and he eventually comes into contact with Saul. But Saul prophesies and tells him that you're going to be king. And he goes on to anoint him. And he's prophesying back on his journey back on, on Samuel's, I mean, Saul's journey back home. Samuel says, uh, you know, he's prophesying on what's going to happen to him. And these things ended up happening. Uh, but it says one specific uh, thing that I found very interesting. It says, "This is First Samuel chapter ten, verse six, and the spirit of, of Yahweh by Shai will come upon thee. Right? It's going to the spirit is going to come upon uh, Saul, and thou shalt prophesy with them. So Saul would eventually turn to be a prophet. Okay, he's going to prophesy with these men that were uh, prophesying on the high on the high hill, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Now he was turned into another man. All right, just how we are." We have the opportunity to sit on the on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and and are are be are, are, are be able to rule in the regeneration when Yahweh side. Right. Now, we've are, we've killed that old man. All right, 
We gotta kill him every day. We gotta bro. kill. We gotta keep killing that old man every day. We can't. Yeah, we can't go back into our own vomit. What if? What happens when we turn our back? And because like Saul, Saul had the chance to to um he was turned into another man. But when you read the the following chapters and you know the story, Saul eventually he he through faith he fell off. And that's a that's yeah. a story for us not to not to look to, man. That's the legacy of Saul. That's yeah. That's a legacy of Saul. That's a legacy of no faith, no exactly. obedience. Exactly. Because right. he, he was changed and he had he he went back to his own vomit, man. Yeah. Uh, and he had to he actually had David. <laughs> it's funny because he had David show him how to be a man, and he was just a child. You know what I'm saying? He had to kill Goliath when, because Samuel knew of the works uh, of Saul and that the Lord was dealing with Saul. He he knew of the stories when they got when they received the Ark of the Covenant. You know what I'm saying? And then um. Or oh, about Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When Saul, Saul Saul knew about Samuel. Yeah, yeah, kind. Of, I'm not, yeah, it's lucky. Yeah. I'm not, you know now Saul you, knew brother. about Samuel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and about the the stories of, of the Lord, man. Another forefathers, you know, so it was no excuse. He was built to be king, but hey, the Lord, you know, He wanted to set him up as an example for us in the latter days, okay, of how to how to act and how to rule our spirit. Because yeah. we was talking about it before with David. David was like, man, I don't need a shield, I don't need a sword. How exactly. you take down Goliath, man? With exactly. A, <laughs> with a stone, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a matter of fact, let's let's get that. Hey, uh, Matthew, ahead, Matthew six. Go I got a quick one, real quick. Uh, Sirach thirty four and thirteen. Right, it says, the spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live, for their hope is in him that saveth them. Whoso feareth the Lord shall not fear nor be afraid, for he is his hope. Blessed is the soul of him that feareth the Lord. To whom does he look to? And who is his strength? Right? Like we read in 1 Maccabees 3, man, our strength cometh from heaven. Our strength doesn't lie in our own might, our muscles, or our, our, our weaponry, or well, you know, how fast we can run. How high we can jump? Mm -hmm. No, man. It says the the Lord, those that put their trust in the Lord, shall renew their strength, and they shall fly. Uh, they shall mount up as eagles. They shall run. You know, uh, Wisdom of Solomon three. It talks about in the time of their visitation, they shall run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. Bro, we're talking about a high level. Uh, 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 we're talking about the Creator of heavens and earth, man, dealing with us, man. Exactly. On that level. And it's just a matter of time for these things be be uh, manifested here in the physical realm. Right. You see what I'm saying? So because our of our faith is going to bring forth those things, man. Our belief in something out of this world and something that hasn't been seen with eyes of men, and, and you know, I mean, but there's there's accounts in the scriptures, but in this day and age, these things uh, like uh, like it says, even First uh, Samuel, it talks about the visions at that period of time were were few, far and few. They were scarce. So we're like, we're like, in certain time periods, like these things would be magnified. Well, now in this period of time, going into Jacob's trouble and even up into, up and before that out there in the highways and hedges, healing people, however it may be, all right, that's, that it starts with our faith, man. Mm -hmm. You see? And that's why a lot of people can't really come into this thing because they're like, how can we be the children of, of uh, Israel, man? How can we be the children of God? We believe, man. Ultimately, I mean, and, and, and uh, you know, faith is a thing too. But the more you, the more you invest in faith in the Lord, He'll start to show you more and give you more evidence. And not only is a confidence booster. Like when we yeah. start to see these prophecies pop off, because we've been diligently learning how things are going to play out. You know what I'm saying? Brothers really believe, so they, they we study, we read, we we make these virtual epistles, man. So when we start to see things happening because we are doing such and obeying the Lord, it's only going to lift up our faith, brother. Right, so right. you know what I'm saying? You might be. Uh, lacking a little bit of faith, but just pray, and the Lord is going to get. He's going to increase all of our faith. You know, Lord's willing, man. Yeah, because even doubting Thomas, he yeah. was one of the twelve, and because he doubted, the Lord kind of you know cursed him out a little bit, if you mm -hmm. will. When you read in John the twentieth chapter, but but at the end of the day, hey, you know when he was like, Lord, like you know what I mean? He stuck his finger like, like yo, it is you. Right. He didn't believe, and it was a little. You know, he doubted a little bit. That's why he's known as Doubting Thomas. Mm -hmm. But he, his ring didn't get to take, taken from him. Right. He was one of the 12, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's an example going into exactly what you just said. Like, like you still follow the lamb whether so, wherever so you go, he goeth. You know what I mean? But even if you sometimes fall short in certain areas, the angels are looking at you like, okay, how is he going to react to this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is he going to bounce back from it? Is he going to keep on going? 
You know what I'm saying? When when it don't feel good, when it's not easy. One for four call, 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 call. Yeah, straight up. But if you want to grab that a point, uh, that that uh, point in the scripture, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to make it too much longer, bro. You know okay. what I'm saying? But uh, um, and then we just got Hebrews ten and we'll close out. Okay, come. Uh, this is Matthew chapter. 6 verse 25 Oh okay I thought she was uh, grabbing that uh, where, where David took down Goliath Oh yeah, But yeah, if you just want to yeah, 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 You know yeah. what I'm saying You should, yeah, you know, you should. If, if you don't go ahead and read It's a beautiful story yeah. You know what I'm saying yeah. But this is alluding to that story You know what I'm saying okay. uh, Therefore Take no I say unto you Take no thought for your life And what ye shall eat Or what ye shall drink for, uh, Nor yet for your body Or what ye shall put on Is life it's Man. like it is is not Man. the life more than meat and the body more than raiment so these things you know preparing for jacob's trouble you know what i'm saying think not that you need to you know jake jake could get carnal right and walk out to the like during jacob's trouble you trying to you know what i'm saying you got to move <laughs> you walk out the damn house with your uh, little league football pads on thinking <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. trying to put it on you know man and there's nothing know, wrong with like <laughs> slacky but yeah. you got it uh, well, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Hey, the Lord ultimately is going to protect us, man. So it's a think not what she Isha put on. You know what I'm saying? Because David, that's that example of David, right, going to fight Goliath. He and, and Saul was trying to basically put, hey, put this arm on. You know what I'm saying? And he couldn't, he wouldn't even go out there knowing he could, he could put the armor on, but he still wouldn't even fight him. You know what I'm saying? Bro, that's a high level of faith. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. even then, it's like wise to, okay, you know what? That's wise. Yeah. Like Raven and now it's wise to stock up stock up on maybe a couple <laughs> packs of water. Right. It yeah. might be a little wise, you know, yeah. get some canned goods. Because we see inflation. That's wise. You see in the prophecies, you're like, okay, exactly. Prepare a little bit. But we don't take we don't trust in those things. But David, that was next level faith right there. Right. Man. He was like, you know what? I don't even need that shit. I'm gonna right. go out here and smoke this dude. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Through the spirit of the power of Yahweh Samuel. Right. Right. Yeah. Of course. And that's and, and even David did. He he knew that uh he, and he was prepared. You know how he was prepared? Because he said Look, I, I've been in the, I've been having these battles. Yeah. I fought the lion. You know, I killed that bear. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't walking out there like, you know what I'm saying? You know, like he yeah, wasn't, yeah. he ain't had nothing prepared. Right. He prepared, man. He had them rocks. He had his, you know, his, uh, what, what is his, uh, I what it's called, yeah, you know, y'all know. So read the story, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he didn't have to have, you know, everything. We don't have to have, uh, uh, sling, uh like yeah, slingshot. Yeah, slingshot. Yeah. We don't have to have a Mac 10, you know, the, the uh, the, the Glock with the silencer on it, man. You, you don't need, bro, bro, we need to stock up on this faith, man. That's the faith, biggest investment bro. we can make. Without it, it's impossible to please. Exactly, exactly. Straight up, bro. Is that all you had? Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, come. Yeah, we'll read this uh, here in Hebrews 10. I'm going to start at verse um, 35, because like you said, it, the, this build, the, seeing the signs, the seeing 444, 144, because when you, Elder Apostle Gabar had did a lesson, well, he had read somewhere online, I suppose, that, that when you see those numbers, that they're, they're called angel numbers, right? Yeah. Well, the, we know the angels are always around us, bro. So I see numbers every day, bro. Like, and I just say, call Allah, you have us in Call Allah, you have us in your Call Allah, you have us You know what I'm saying? Because it's just further confirmation that the angels are around, man. Right. That they encamp around. And encampeth, that's a, that's a war terminology. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're ready to go. Ready for battle. Ready to go. You got demons coming at you. Hey, they shield right. you know what i'm saying the shield of faith mm -hmm. <laughs> we went into Ooh. ephesians 6 a yeah. few months back or, yeah. you know what i mean uh -huh. so yeah it's important bro faith bro above all taking the shield of faith man and that's funny how it's, that's that's it's the shield and that's for protection protection right? bro yes you know what i'm saying this is hebrews 10 and 35 it says cast not away therefore your confidence which when you go into that word confidence con mm -hmm. meaning with all right and then fidence or fidelity going into faith so with faith so you can't cast away true confidence is having faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. That in whatever circumstance you're in, however it may look, how, how bad it may appear in the flesh, that you understand that there's a divine energy protecting you, man. You see? So cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Right? Your confidence is going to pretty much, uh, like it says, Isaiah 33 and 6, we don't have to grab it. But wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure, man. Mm -hmm. When you walk with the fear of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, which is which is pr pretty much tying into faith as well, you understand that there's no other entity out there. There's, there's that all the end all be all is Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. That's all that matters. 
You, you see what I'm saying? That's all that's going to pretty much, nothing's going to deliver you but him. If it's in his will to, for you to be delivered, that's it. Because he killeth, he maketh alive. He he bringeth down, he lifteth up. He woundeth, he healeth. So so if you're going through hardship, hey, it's your house from your son. And, when, when, and like it says, Hebrews 12 and starting around verse 7 on down, uh, it talks about despise not the chastisement of the Heavenly Father, man. Yeah. Because hey, if you be, you be sons if you're with chastisement, but if you're without chastisement, hey, you're a bastard like the rest of the world, man. Chastise who he loveth. He chastise who he loveth. That's right, bro. All right? So it says, verse 36, For ye have need of patience, right, your ability to suffer, that after ye have done the will of the Most High, ye might receive his promise. And the scripture says what? Real quick. Hebrews 6 and 10, For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Like we always go into name. Yes, it's the name. Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. There's power in those names, man. Yeah. Right? The true names that will be uttered in, in, in the kingdom of heaven as well, man. Every knee shall bow and confess these names, right? Yeah, every tongue shall confess these names, right? But it says... His name also being what the, the 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 rank, understanding that he is that, that that there's nothing else, bro. Yeah. You know, understanding that 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 authority that lies within that power, man, the power, the only power, because the angels <laughs> submit to his will, man. So if it's if it's an angel, a, evil angel, if you will, or as they say, a demon coming at you, hey, you see how about some your side testing you? Right. You know what I'm saying? But if you be patient, like it says, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of the Most High, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Right? Like it says, Hebrews yeah. 2. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, not Hebrews 2. Yeah, have, have a cook too. Yeah. Have a cook too. Uh, uh, surely they shall come, they shall not tarry. Mm -hmm. See, we believe the words, man. So anybody talking about the book of Hebrews, not the word of Most High, man, you through, bro. And the just shall live by faith. The just, like, and it's gonna go into that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jump the gun. Yeah, jump the gun a little bit, brother. <laughs> nah, it sounds good though. It says it. Yeah. Hebrews ten and thirty eight. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw a bag, if you start yeah. to get timid or cower away, no man, be have your chest out, man. Right. Be firmly rooted, man. Have confidence. Like it said, man, cast not away therefore your confidence. If you draw back, you're casting away your confidence in, in the Lord, man. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. He that cometh unto the Most High must believe that he is, bro, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. All right, one more verse. It says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that, have, that believe to the saving of the soul, man. Yeah. Yeah. Point blank period, bro. So if you ain't got no closing points, we can go ahead and wrap it up, bro. Yeah, and that's that's a that that makes the point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Saul had a chance, you know, to show he believes, you know, so why he was built to be a king, mm -hmm. and that's what we're coming into now. It's up to us to show. Are are we gonna, you know, truly believe? We have the generations of old previous accounts of, you know, how to how to act when things happen, man. So. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Come, come. Yeah, you want to close out? Come. Uh, yeah, Lord's will is edifying. You know, stay strong, stay solid in these last days, man, and believe most importantly. I hope you know we got it. We're going to keep pushing faith. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, with that, we'll close. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto my heavenly Father. His name is Yahweh. Hashem. Yahweh Shai. Hashem Rakakwatash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us His truth. Shalom. Shalom.